What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here with some solving quadratic equations by factoring. Love me some factoring. And you may notice here, in this one here, these four examples, we have lead coefficients that are greater than one. Ah! A little more complicated, but we'll get through it. First two examples, I'm gonna show you how to do guess and check. The second two, I'm gonna show you how to set up factor by grouping or sometimes called rainbow method. All right, because it helps when the numbers are even. There's a lot of possibilities going on, okay? So first one here. Guess and check. Here's why I like to do guess and check for this one. You can do rainbow method if you want, but I'm gonna do guess and check, okay? I know it's gonna be two factors here, if it's factorable, equals zero. To get two x squared, I know I have to have two x and x. There's no other way to get two x squared, right? The other part, I gotta multiply to seven, negative seven, while adding to five. So there's a few possibilities here, right? I'm gonna show some wrong ones first and work through it so you can see the guess and check process and not just me being like, see, you got around the first try, easy. No, let's say I do this. Let's say I do seven and one, right? One of them needs to be positive, one needs to be negative, okay? Well, if I've got positive seven and I multiply these together, I get 14x and here I'd get negative one x, 14x, negative one X, that's gonna to add to 13 X. And even if I switch those signs, I get negative 13 X, which isn't five X, right? So no bueno. But let's set up another set of factors here, again with the two X, and again with the X, because I know that's gotta be correct. But this time, let's throw the seven here and the one here. I wanna to add to positive five X. Well, here I'm gonna get two X, here I'm gonna get seven X. Which one of those should be positive? Which one should be negative? The 7x we want to be positive and the negative 2x then, right? Because then I have 7x, negative 2x that adds up to 5x. I just guessed. I get and I checked and then I guessed again and I checked, right? 2x squared, negative 7. We get 7x, negative 2x that adds to the 5x. This is factored. We're good to go. It takes a little bit to get used to guess and check. But with practice, it is a faster method, especially when you're dealing with prime numbers, okay? Easier to go with prime numbers. This guy right here, I ain't touching this with guess and check. It's gonna be a lot of work, okay? Uh-uh, better methods for that, in my opinion, right? And I'm making the video, so it's my opinion. Now I'm gonna set these equal to zero. I got two x plus seven equals zero, and x minus one equals zero. Here I'm gonna get x equals positive one. Here I gotta subtract seven, so I got two x equals negative seven, then divide by two, I get x equals negative seven halves. So those are my two whoop, solutions. Boom and boom. All right, there we go. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, next one. So guess and check's a little trickier here because I do have an even number. There's a couple more possibilities here, right? This one, it was just two x and x, seven and one, right? So we'll get it though, we'll get it. All right, one more guess and check try here and then we'll go to the rainbow method. All right, so I got two sets of parentheses. I know I have to have three X and X, right? Cool, we know that's true. Now, let's think about this. If I went two and two here, let's see here, two and two, right? I usually pick the closest numbers together when possible, when applicable, right? Over here, I only had one option. So if I got two and two, one of them's positive, one of them's negative, right? To get to a negative four. Let's see what which one it should be. Well, here I'd get six X, here I'd get two X. If one of those is negative, could I get four X when added together? Yes. I'd want this guy to be negative and this one to be positive because then I'm gonna get positive six X from these two, negative two X from these two, six X minus two X gives me that four X. That one's factored first try. I threw the numbers in first, and then I try placing the signs appropriately and foiling out my head. Again, this is the toughest, it's a tougher way to factor, but it is faster when you get some practice and you're dealing with prime numbers or somewhat manageable, you know, numbers with multiple factors, okay? So I'm gonna set these guys equal to zero. Three X minus two equals zero. X plus two equals zero. I'm gonna add two, so I get three X equals two. Divide by three, I get X equals two thirds. Circle it. And then over here, I'm gonna get x equals negative two. Circle it. Boom, two solutions, quadratic, degree of two. It's gonna have two solutions there. That's the fundamental theory of algebra. That's dope. All right, fundamental 
theorem of algebra. Sometimes I don't enunciate enough there with the big words. Okay. All right, this bad boy. This is one. This one's tough. Okay, we're gonna do a little side work. Okay, over here. All right. So I'm gonna have this little x here, and the top number here is I'm gonna get from getting the eight, and I got kind of some stuff in the way there, and the six. Eight times six is forty-eight. Okay. I need to multiply to that while adding to nineteen. What's gonna do that? How about let's see here. Forty-eight. One and forty-eight. No. Two and twenty-four. No. This is forty. Is forty-eight divisible by divisible by three? Yes, it's 16. 3 and 16, both positive are going to do that. But it's not x plus 3 and x plus 16. Uh-uh. That's not correct. We're going to use these two to break up the 19x and set up factor by grouping. So I'm going to have 8x squared plus 3x plus 16x plus 6 equals 0. Is 3x plus 16x 19x? It certainly is. All right, so still equivalent to the one above. I'm just using an algebraic strategy to help me manage the tougher situation, okay? So I'm going to group the first two and the last two terms. These are not my factors, but I can pull out a GCF here. So GCF comes into play. Well, these both have an X in common, nothing else, and I'd be left with 8X plus 3. This one here, or sorry, 8X, yeah, plus 3. Then this one over here. What would I take out of both of these? Well, this is divisible by 2, as is this. Anything bigger? No. So I'm going to have plus 2, parentheses, 8x plus 3. Holy guacamole. These two are the same. This is one big old term. This is one big old term. They have this in common. Sorry, I'm smudging. So 8x plus 3 will come out. x plus 2 is left over, those are my two factors. And there we are, we're factored form. Just like we did before, this would have been tough with guess and check. It's doable, just it take it could take quite a bit of time. If you get lucky, it's awesome. But if not, you're like, ah, right, you know? So there we go. Um, I'm gonna set these equal to zero and finish this bad boy off. Equal zero, equal zero. Um, I'm gonna subtract three, divide by eight. I'm gonna get x equals negative three eighths, okay? Sorry, I'm moving a little fast there. I don't want to spend all the time on that. And then x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2, I get x equals negative 2. America, beautiful, fantastic. Last one here, dogs. I'm going to go I'm gonna go back to orange here in the corner. Whoop, whoop. All right. Once again, going to do a little rainbow method, okay? So here I got 4 times negative 10. All right, I got a little x here. I'm running out of room, but, you know, I think we'll be all right. So we got negative 40. Right? And I gotta add the negative three. What two numbers are gonna do that? Hmm. Well, we got one and forty, no. Two and twenty, no. Mm, four and ten, no. Five and eight. There we go. So five, eight. Which one needs to be negative there? Because it's gotta multiply to a negative forty, add a negative three. Eight's gonna be negative. Now I can break this negative three x up into five x and negative eight x. The four x squared does not change, so four x squared plus five x minus 8x minus 10 equals 0. I now have four terms. So I'm going to group these, first two, last two. Make sure you bring that negative sign in there. It is important, children. All right, GCF time. I can pull out an x from each one of these. So I got x, and then I'd have 4x plus 5 left over. All right, if you don't know how to do GCF, I got GCF video as well. If you're watching the long form, skip back, baby. Skip back to the beginning. It's GCF. All right. Now, what can I take out of both of these? I can take out a negative and a 2, and I'm left with x. Sorry, 4x. Don't forget that 4. 4x plus 5. That all equals 0. Nice. Now, we have the 4x plus 5 and the 4x plus 5 in common from these two large terms here. So, 4x plus 5 comes out. And then we got x minus 2 left over equals 0. Oh, boy. We're going to run short on room here. 4x plus 5 equals 0. I get x equals negative 5 fourths. And over here, I get x minus 2 equals 0. So I get x equals 2. Hopefully, those all stayed in frame there. We're good. We're good. I got a little, got a little camera. A little, not camera on here, but I can see the screen. All right. There we go, guys. That's, that's a lot of factoring right there. That is... 
That's mathematical poetry, if you will. All right, there we go. That's awesome. Factoring when the lead coefficient is greater than one. It's probably the most challenging factoring that you're going to face. Everybody struggles with it, so it takes a lot of practice. I'm glad you're putting in the time right now. All right, on to some factor by grouping, right? We got some polynomial action here in the next video if you are still watching the long form. Otherwise, I, I suggest checking it out because we got all sorts of dope factoring. See you dogs later.